Hello, it's Karen Berniston here with my monthly designer challenge video. This month we have a theme of trees, please, and the idea is to use any of the tree dies. And I decided to use the Christmas tree die set and decorate it with lots of ribbons and trims for kind of a vintage look. And you can check out all of my designs at karenberniston.com. The first step is to decorate the tree parts with ribbons. It will be easy to attach the ribbon if the trees are sticky. So I'm using these Sizzix 6x6 adhesive sheets and I'll just attach one of those pieces of adhesive to a 6x6 piece of about a medium weight white cardstock. My dies can be cut in any of the major die cutting machines. Today I am using a Sizzix Big Shot. And I do link all of my supplies in the About section below my videos. I'm die cutting through the adhesive side of the cardstock, one set of the big trees and then two sets of the small trees. If you go through your stash like I did, I bet you can come up with all sorts of variations of ribbons and trims. That's what I did, kind of sticking with a beige and cream and white theme for this. And what I want to do is cover these trees with stripes of those trims. Now one thing is I will have to cut the mechanism back into them again. So one cheat on the big trees would be to put something like a lace along the bottom of the tree because it'll be easy to get in there with your scissors to trim out those two little holes that are in the tree later. So just a little tip from me, if you can find something that has a lace feel to it, that's a great choice for the very bottom layer of the trees. Then I just continue on adding stripes of ribbons all the way up both trees. And I did have them match. So whatever I did on one tree, I did the same on the other tree so that later on when those trees are slotted together, they will match up. So once I've covered my two big trees, then I just need to take my scissors, turn them over and trim the outside edges to match and also get those two little holes at the bottom and all of the little notches. And this is where having those lace over those little holes was good because I could get in there with the tip of my scissors and just snip it and then I could kind of hollow out those holes. Now, one thing I didn't realize is that I was doing all of this trimming off camera. You can see the little confetti coming down as I'm trimming all these trees. So I apologize, but I don't have any of the footage of me actually trimming them. But this is what you want to do. And you can see that the slot is back in the tree and all the little notches are cut into them as well. Now in general, you only see the front part of the tree, but you see just a smidge of the back as the card is opening and closing. And rather than have just a stark white back to my trees, I just went into my stash and found an old background stamp. I happen to find one with words, but really you could use anything. You know, I had one that was like paisley or something. It wouldn't matter, just to add a little texture to the back of the trees. I stamped them in antique linen, distress ink, and then use that same antique linen just to go around the edges with a blending tool. So that's just to have a little something on the back of the trees for when the card is just opening and closing that you don't just see stark white on the back. The big trees hook together. You take the more solid one, it has a notch at the bottom. You get that notch down into the slot on your other tree, and then you just kind of bend at the top until you can work the notch that's at the top of the tree into the slot as well and that will hook those two trees together. When I go to cover the small trees, they're already connected together as a group of two, but you'll notice that they have a different angle to them each side. Each tree has its own angle. So I would suggest that you do your trims, especially things like this that have like music notes or anything that has a direction to it. You would want to do that in two pieces and just make sure that you avoid the little tabs that are on the side of the trees that you don't accidentally cut those off when you're trimming your ribbons because you will need them to assemble the tree later. These really don't have to match each other because one's for the front of the tree and one's for the back of the tree. But I would suggest any bulky trims that you only use those on the set that's for the front of the tree since the back one is the one that has to collapse down into the fold of the card. And I did the same stamp and ink treatment to the back of the trees. The next step is to make my card and my tree base. I found this tree trunk paper at Michael's and a three inch circle is perfect for underneath the tree. And there is a three inch circle die in the snowman twist circle set. So I'm going to use that. 
After die cutting, I'll cut the circle in half. The idea is I'm going to leave a little gap between the two halves of the circle that will correspond with the fold in my backing card. And that way I won't have that paper bunching up in the fold. So I'll use now my pop-up die from the Christmas tree set just centered over that circle with those alignment nubs right in that gap. The pop-up die in the Christmas tree set cuts two tabs on either side of the fold that are perfectly sized to fit with the tree trunk base to be able to animate the tree. So each of those tabs will fold up like this. Next I'll die cut the tree trunk and I'm using a very sturdy cream cardstock for this. The tree trunk has score lines in it. I always find that it's easiest to fold towards the line first and then in all cases I'm going to reverse it. So I stick my thumbnail into the fold, fold towards my thumb, and then immediately reverse it until I've made mountain folds out of all the folds. And then there's a little tab to connect that tree trunk on the other side and make a little box. Once the glue sets up, I can make sure that that box folds nicely in either direction. There really is no front or back to this piece. All four sides are the same, and it is sized to fit over those two tabs, just like that. I'm a fan of glue for this. Today I've been using my fine tip bottle filled with Lineco Neutral pH Adhesive. It's my very favorite. Both those items are sold on our website. I like to just use a pinky finger and my thumb to press that tab right into the corner of the tree trunk. Now I'll repeat that process for the other tab, just adding my strong adhesive on top of the tab and then getting it right into the corner, the other corner of my tree trunk base. My brown cardstock card is 9 inches by 6 inches scored in the middle at 4.5 inches. And then to that I'm going to attach two paper panels, each one being 4 and a quarter inches by 5 and 5 eighths inch. Before I attach those paper panels, I will use a half inch corner chomper to round two opposite corners of each paper. And I've decided to do the, on the bottom of the pieces, it'll be the outside corners. And at the top of the pieces, it'll be the inside corners. And that'll make a fun shape for the outside of my card. I will use a tape runner to attach those panels now inside my card. Then with my card folded, I'll round the upper left and the lower right corners. That will then match up with the shape of the paper on the inside as well as make a fun shape for the outside of my card. You get to choose your own card size with my dies, but one thing about the Christmas tree is you do need three inches from the center of the tree trunk to the back of the card to hide a tree that has no star on top in the card. If it has a star, you actually have to give yourself three and a quarter to three and a half. So by choosing a six inch tall card, I can pretty much just center this tree skirt and know that my tree is going to fit in the card and be hidden when the card is closed. So to do that, I will attach one half of the tree skirt, just butt it up next to the fold on the left hand side, then I'll add my strong glue all over the base of the tree skirt for the other half and stretch it across and get it into position. And there is that little gap in the tree skirt in that center fold because I purposely die cut it that way earlier. Step three is assemble the tree. On each side of the tree trunk is a little tab and those little tabs need to be temporarily folded outward. They're actually going to go through the holes at the base of the large trees, but to do that I need to actually get them a little bit out of the way first. So I fold all four of those tabs outward. Then I'll take my large tree set and making sure that the pretty ribbon side is towards the front of the card, you the viewer are looking at the front of the card, making sure that, that those ribbons are all pointing towards the front, I want to work one at a time to get that tree down into that notch on the tree trunk and then wiggle that tab that I've just temporarily folded outward, wiggle that tab actually through the hole on the big tree. And that will lock those two pieces together. 
So doing this process is probably the fussiest part of assembling the Christmas tree die. You get really good at it kind of once you get the motion of just putting that tree down into that notch and then simultaneously wiggling that tab back through the holes. And if you just work one side at a time, it's actually pretty easy. But since I've got ribbons all over my trees here, I would say if this is your first time using the Christmas tree die, you might try it first with some scrap paper just so you kind of get that motion of how you get the tree down into that notch and then wiggle the tab back through. In fact, I had a little bit of lace that was in the way when I was trying to get that final tab through the hole in the back of that Christmas tree. So it took me a little bit of extra time. But once I get all four of those tabs through the holes on the big Christmas tree, those pieces are locked together now. That is probably the, like I say, the fussiest part of the assembly, but if you take your time with that, it's smooth sailing from here. While I have this tight close-up, let me point out where the notches are. There are two notches on each side of those big trees, and those are going to correspond with the slots that are in the small trees. So you take the slot in the small tree, and you get it seated into the notch on the large tree at the bottom. Just make sure that it's in that notch. Then you have to wiggle the branches of the large tree through that slot and then just click it into place at the top. It's actually very simple. You've got the notch at the bottom, you've got the notch at the top, and they're both seated in there. Then I repeat that process with the other small tree. I make sure that the slot is in the notch at the bottom, wiggle all the branches of the big tree through the slot, and then just click it at the top. Really, really simple. Now all I need to do is turn this tree around and repeat that exact same process with my other set of small trees. You just start with the notch at the bottom, wiggle the tree branches through, click them in at the top. The last assembly step is to use the little small tabs that are between the two tree sets to attach them to the other set of trees. Normally you would use glue on those tabs, but in this case I had added the double-sided tape all over the piece before die cutting, so then those are still sticky, and I can use the tape that's already on them to attach them to the other side. And that is the assembly of the Christmas tree. Now the first time you fold it, you may want to give it a little help. You've kind of flattened it out a little bit in attaching those small tabs, so just give it a little help to fold down, but then once it folds down that first time and you give everything a good press in the closed position, you've got a working pop-up. That tree will pop down and pop up as the card is opened and closed. So now I'll just add a few more trimmings to the tree. I added some lace to the upper part of the tree and then a pearl trim to the middle part of the tree and then I realized I wanted to antique some of the pearls. So this was made more difficult by the fact that I didn't do it before adding the trim to the tree, but it was easy enough to take my brown Copic marker in there and color every other pearl to antique it. I also added some individual pearls that had been antiqued with that same brown marker just randomly around the tree. I added some tulle underneath the tree, and that just needed to be tacked down on the back. Other than that, it's just free flowing. I used some of the decorator pieces from the snowman twist circle to add a block for me to sign the card, plus all the snowflakes came from that set as well. For a greeting, I chose Happy Christmas, and I made that using dies from word set three and curving the word Christmas as I put it down. And then just a few randomly placed gold sequins and the interior of my card was complete. The last step is to finish the card front. Okay, I'm going to clip my card closed so that I can just check things. I've already taken my leftover pattern papers and a strip of the white cardstock that has the double-sided adhesive on it already prepared to fit the front of my card and then it's just a matter of repeating that process of filling in that double-sided adhesive with my various trims. And then another snowflake and a couple gold sequins to finish it off. My favorite way to design card fronts is basically just to grab my leftover materials from what I did in the card's interior and kind of match a simple little lead-in with the same general colors and styling. So that's it, my finished card. It measures four and a half by six inches when closed, so I'll be able to mail it in an A7 envelope. 
It is a little bulky because of all those dimensional trims that I used on the tree, so I probably will have to use a little extra postage for this one. But if you stick with just flat ribbons, you should be able to mail it for a single stamp. And my videos do always come with blog posts, so you'll be able to just follow the link that's in the About section over to the blog. You'll find not only these photos of my card, but some great cards made by the team. If you click on the website link, you'll go to KarenBerniston.com where you can find out information about purchasing these dies as well as links to all my other social media accounts. You can subscribe to this YouTube channel and check out some of my other videos. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you next time.